Hello, this is old Mr. Kent of MrKent.com and if this video looks dark <laughs> because it w it's because it was dark um, I took I started out a little uh, just before six o'clock about quarter to six in the morning and uh, I'm headed to the park my favorite flying park to uh, to do some flying and uh, it's by the time I come back it's going to be 80 degrees so that it gets to be so I can't fly my drone because it's too hard on the batteries so <clears throat> uh, I'm just gonna go early and uh, uh, try to enjoy flying and then I'm still practicing how to use the Movavi uh, video editor so uh, and then uh, also I'll be telling a story uh, <laughs> about uh, flying uh, tail dragger airplanes so uh, anyway uh, the the thing about tail draggers is they're uh, they're much more difficult to land than the normal plane that you see around <clears throat> because they want to just go everywhere other than the direction that you want them to go and so um, uh, I got a picture coming up here in just a second yeah, there we go. A normal plane has the steering wheel, the steerage in the front, whereas a tail dragger, the wheel that does the steering is in the back. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't sound too too bad, except for when you're coming in at 60 miles an hour. If you want to find out how hard it is to land a tail dragger, next time you're at uh, Walmart. Oh, by the way, this is my this is my route that we're taking. I'm starting from the right and headed to my park over on the left, and so. Uh, I just I'm not going to show you that trip and by the way when I got there just after I got there Randy showed up with his RC plane so I had to get some shots of him flying because he's he's uh he was well I've got a video uh, uh, oh, a few a few videos back when he and Joey were flying here at the park so I wanted to get some shots of him doing flying his his RC plane anyway so uh tail dragger is like uh if you go to Walmart and get a, a shopping cart, you push it forward, it just goes nice. You can let go of it and it'll keep going straight. But if you turn it around and push it from the front and push it away from you, immediately it's going to try to turn around. Well, consider yourself sitting in a tail wheel airplane that as soon as the wheels touch down at 60 miles an hour, it wants to switch around and put the, put the tail in front and, you, and uh, the nose in the back. And so that's that's why it's so so difficult. So anyway, I'll tell you a story here. Um, well, first of all, when I got my my tail dragger, I always wanted one, and I had to fly down to California to buy it. And the guy that was selling it was an instructor, and so <clears throat> uh, he said he would teach me how to how to uh, how to land it because uh, that's the hardest part about it. And so. Um, uh, we met out at the airport, and I, I paid I paid six thousand dollars, which back then was a really good buy, even even back then. Paid six thousand dollars for it, and uh, we went up and did some stalls, and then we came in, and uh, he was sitting on the right seat, and I was sitting on the left seat because he was the instructor. So as soon as the wheels touched down, uh, the plane started going every which way, like a goth, uh, <laughs> a shopping cart in the store you know so it's going every which way and and once i finally got it stopped well the the instructor took over and uh once i finally got stopped i thought i just spent six thousand dollars on an airplane i'll never be able to land well anyway as it turned out i uh it didn't take too many landings until i got got it figured out and i learned to, to land a tail dragger and it you get better and better every time well then, <clears throat> um, uh, other people wanted to learn to fly a tail dragger. The secretary at our church was a licensed pilot, and so she wanted to to uh, land, uh, learn to land a tail dragger because uh, uh, she was going to be getting one. So I took her up, and uh, she didn't do too bad uh, the, <laughs> after the first one or two landings. And of course, she was landing my plane, and I didn't want to didn't want it crash. But she did okay, and so uh, she finally got to where she could land. When the first time she tried to land the little, uh, it was a flybaby uh, homemade plane. First time she tried to land that, she uh, 
she almost destroyed it and and uh actually bent the front front uh, left front wheel and uh so uh, they had me fly it a hundred miles down to the mechanic to get it fixed because they figured I could land it even with the wheel bent <laughs> so anyway um she turned out to be a pretty good uh, tail dragger pilot. And then when I got up to Spokane years later, uh, I was uh, I found a new dentist, and so I was sitting in a chair, and we were talking, and, and he, he was a licensed pilot, and so was I. And then he heard that I had a tail dragger, and he always wanted to learn to land a tail dragger. And so um, <laughs> I said, well, you know, I'll teach you how if you want. And, you know, it's kind of tricky because you got to sit in the right seat. And I didn't know what kind of a pilot he was. And so uh, you don't want to stall on the on the final approach or stuff like that. So you watch really, really close to make sure that he's doing the right things. So anyway, uh, he was all over the runway the first time. And then the second time, he got better. And by the time uh, we had gone out a couple times, he was he was doing a pretty good job. But the nice thing about it was I had a $700 dentist bill, which he wiped off the books. Off. <laughs> so I got my dentist bill uh, wiped away. It didn't cost me anything for the dentist, and I had fun flying. So that turned out pretty good. <clears throat> so those are some tail draggers stories. Uh, tail draggers are they're nice to have because you can land a tail dragger on all kinds of rough terrain. But if you try to land a regular plane with a nose wheel out there, uh, you can break that nose wheel off if you hit the wrong kind of a bump. So anyway, um, those are some tail dragger stories from flying. I think probably what I'll do now is I'll read you a poem. If you remember in a uh, video or so back, I wrote a poem for my son and, uh, and it was, you know, everybody liked it. So then my daughter wanted me to write her a poem. Well, she was, <laughs> she, she was young and, and she was chewing her fingernails and I kept telling her, I'm gonna write you a poem on chewing your fingernails, which I did, but she was not happy with me for that. So as she got older and was a teenager, I finally uh, came up with a poem just for her. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's called, <clears throat> And You Were Gone. I first saw you in a baby crib with little diapers on and such little tiny fingers. I looked again and you were gone. I watched you take your first steps with no hand to lean upon and try to drink milk from a cup. I looked again and you were gone. I glanced out the kitchen window as you played upon the lawn with your little toy possessions. I looked again, and you were gone. I watched you learn to ride a bike as you hollered, Dad, hang on, and daubed some tears and patched some tires and looked again, and you were gone. I saw you leave for school one day with brand new slickers on and watched you learn to read and write and looked again, and you were gone. I watched you grow and change and laugh and cry as life began to dawn and learn to face its trials. I looked again and you were gone. I guess I should have recognized as I hurried through each day and worked and played and paid the bills, those times would slip away. I had but just one chance to see what lay before my eyes. T'was there to love and hold and teach before it passed on by. There's a precious thing that's known as time. It burns slow, but constantly. Its ashes lie in a scattered heap that we call the memory. And as I probe in desperate pain to find the one I seek, the ashes only wisp about, and the memory seems more bleak. The ones who mean the most to me that I see each fleeting day are the ones I need to linger with and spend more time along the way. For being a little wiser, and as this day begins to dawn, I know that by this evening I'll look again and find it gone. 
Well, I want to thank you for watching my videos and uh, <laughs> listen to my stories. And God bless. Thank you.